Good morning, everybody. Let's, let's take our place and Merry Christmas, amen? Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you now. We thank you. We give you praise and honor and glory, and we thank you. We say thank you, Jesus, for coming all those years ago and tabernacling with us. Thank you, Yeshua. We love you so much, and we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We say glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth and goodwill to men. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You have fulfilled the covenant. You have fulfilled the promise. You have fulfilled the feast of the Lord. And we just give you all this praise and we give you all this adoration in the true spirit of the, of the season we're celebrating. We give you all the love and adoration that is due to you. We thank you in your precious name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's stand together. And uh, I thought we were going to have musicians. They asked me what time to be here, but evidently we don't. So we'll just sing a cappella. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Joy to the World, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with wind and grace, and makes the nations prove the glory is all his righteousness, and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love. service on a Sunday, and I said, well, he is the reason, amen? amen. He is the reason, amen. amen. And this is a perfect, uh, that was a perfect segue to this song. Oh, come, are ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, oh, come, ye, come ye to Hallelujah. <coughs> Let's 
just trying to jump onto a part. Since Pastor Johnny was carrying the melody so well. Amen. Let's see. Go tell it on the mountain. Oh,
to attend to the Lord's table, mm -hmm. and I'm going to continue singing Silent Night. And as you come, can you bring your uh, communion to the Lord's Supper? And just stay at the altar. We'll all partake together. All right? Hallelujah. If you need a chair, sit in the front row. Silent night, holy night. All is calm, all is bright, round your virgin mother and child. Oh, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Why is it important to proclaim his death, Levi? Because it's in his death that he paid the price for my sins and for your sins and for the sins of the whole world. Amen? That's why he proclaimed his death. His, his death would have been void and in vain if he would not have rose from the grave in victory from death, over death. But he did rise. Amen? He did rise. Amen? But he had to pay the price. And I think too often we skip over the celebration of the price he paid for our salvation. Amen? Yes. Therefore, whoever eats of this bread or drinks of this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. That reminds us that, once, first of all, this is a holy, this isn't a piece of cracker or grape juice that we take for our, our flesh to be built up for sustenance. This is a spiritual meal and it represents Christ being the fulfillment of all of the feasts. All of the feasts uh, that were given for the people who worship Christ to say, I am the feast. I fulfill the feast. It's me. I am the light, the truth, light, and the way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so when we do this, we have to do it sacredly and holy and set apart. We're also supposed to ask the Lord to show us if there's anything in unpleasing in our bodies, in our minds, in our spirits, our soul, and then put it under the blood before we partake of this. In Jesus' name, wash away our sins. Lord, make us holy before you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the earth. He was prophesying of his own resurrection. He was the bread of life. He came forth from the earth on the third day, just like he said he would do. Let's partake of the Lord's body. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. He would have said, Blessed are you, Lord of God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. He was prophesying that by his blood, he would graft us him to the true vine of Abraham. And the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would become the God of all nations. And we would be grafted in as part of the vine of the righteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's partake of the blood of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. It says afterwards, they say to him, Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow. Now, can I have uh, some ushers come forth? Who wants to be my ushers today? May, uh, oh, let's do Ronnie, and let's have uh, Brother Levi, want to come forth to be an usher today? Levi. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So you may have wanted to bring a Christmas gift to the Lord today, um, and this is an appropriate time to bring our gifts to the Lord, amen? Hallelujah, I'm going to ask Pastor Father to pray over the gifts. Father, we just thank and praise you for this opportunity, God. We, we read in your word, Lord, the, the first kings that came to worship you brought gifts of gold and myrrh and frankincense. And Father, though our, goal, our gift may not be as grand as theirs, Lord, any gift from the heart you receive and you cherish, Father. We just thank you, Lord, for each one bringing the gift today. 
Father, in your precious name, Lord, in respect of what you gave, you gave your life, you gave your all for us, and we thank and praise you, and we ask you, Father, to bless each one, Lord, whether they have to give or they have not. If they have not, Father, bless them, Lord, so they be able to enjoy the many, many rewards of giving to you, and we give you all the praise and the glory and the matchless name of Jesus. Messiah Project. 
and I've already got, thank you. We already have schools and they have been spoken to about this and uh, things that I've been dropping the seeds before I even knew what we were going to do and God just brought it all together in an instant. So the Messiah Project, and we'll have different soloists from different churches all throughout Sacramento learning the various solos from, from the, uh, the Handel's Messiah. Now you know Handel wrote the Messiah as an Easter play, even though we don't like the term, that's what it was written for, an Easter, an Easter performance for the, for the king and for the queen. And uh, so we went to perform this at Resurrection Sunday time, and the original season it was written for uh, in 2018. And so in the interim, we'll have little concerts here and there, uh, possibly next uh, next uh, season of Christmas, we'll have portions of the Messiah here. I have a harpist and uh, Benny Maslain that will want to play in it. And we're going to be playing and singing. I'm going to try to bring in a couple of uh, people from the entertainment industry that I have connections with. And uh, uh, some have uh, suggested that I bring Mariah Carey they have a direct uh, concert, but I mean, I'm not sure no one's committed yet. There'll be a couple of names that, that we'll be able to bring uh, that will be able to be part of this project. And I believe from here, it will launch a citywide thing where Sacramento is going to be known as a city that takes care of the downtrodden. Amen? Because Jesus took care of the downtrodden. Jesus took care of them. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's, uh, let's celebrate with this and then I'll bring a short reading and we'll dismiss. Hallelujah. Just sing along as you can because it's too difficult to do it right. Maybe a little bit more volume than Unto us, 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 unto us
This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone was traveling to be registered in his own city. Now Joseph also went up from the Galilee, out of the town of Nazareth, to Judah, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was from the house and the family of David. He went to register with Miriam, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. But while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in strips of cloth and set him down in a manger, since there was no room in the inn for them. Now there were shepherds in the same region, living out in the fields and guarding their flock at night. Suddenly, an angel of Adonai stood before them, and the glory of Adonai shone all around them, and they were absolutely terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim good news to you, which will be great joy to all the people. A Savior is born to you today in the city of David, who is the sign of the Lord. And the sign to you is this. You will find an infant wrapped in strips of cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly a multitude of heavenly armies appeared. See this heavenly armies appear with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, shalom to the men of goodwill. And when the angels departed from them into the heavens, the shepherds were saying to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened with Adonai has made known to us. So they hurried off and found Miriam and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they had seen this, they made known to know the word that had been spoken to them concerning this child. And all those who heard were amazed at the things that the shepherds had told them. But Miriam treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, just as they had been told. Hallelujah. When eight days had passed for his brit milah, he was named Yeshua, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of the purification were filled, according to the days of the uh, Torah of Moses, they brought him to Jerusalem to present to Adonai. As it is written, the Torah of Adonai, every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be called Adonai, holy to Adonai. So they offered a sacrifice according to what was said in the Torah of Adonai, a pair of turtle doves and two in pigeons. I'm going to stop there. I want to let you know that, that uh, as I was reading this beautiful card Marcy gave me, uh, and so I need to let everybody know that I got behind this year with all the festivities, and I didn't get all, I got half of my cards done, and I ran out of ink and stuff, and I never finished the other half. So if, you, if some of you received a card and some of you didn't from the Hinkle family, it's not because we picked favorites. It's, uh, it's because we just ran out of time, <laughs> time and money to get to the, to the post office. But uh, our Christmas card this year, it said two things on the, on the cover of it. It said, um, it said who put the question? Who put the X in, Chris, in Xmas? And he opened it up and it said answer. And the answer was the, because a lot of people used to think that people were trying to get rid of Christ, but that's not true. It came from the Greek word for Christ, which is Christos, and the first letter in Greek is an X. Christos, the X. And, and so the answer was Christos, so we said from the Hinkle family to yours, Mary, Christos must, or Xmas. So that was what the X represented. But then on the other side, I put another fun fact. And I explained that although we celebrate, we do, it's our culture, it's our tradition. I don't have a convention about not celebrating uh, the season of Christmas in December, although it's not the proper season. Christ fulfilled the feasts. He was born on Sukkot. Sukkot means tabernacle or dwelling. He was Emmanuel, God dwelling with man. Amen? He dwells, God with us is Emmanuel. He was born on the Feast of Tabernacles. 
he was circumcised on Sinkat Torah. Sinkat Torah is the one day of the year that, that God's people were commanded. They could not mourn. Even if you lost a loved one to death on that day, you were not allowed to be sad or mourn. You had to rejoice. And why was that? Just like we read that they took him on the eighth day and he was circumcised and taken to Jerusalem and a sacrifice was offered. It was it's kind of like, we just went through an election cycle, so this is the best example I could think of. On election day, we knew that our next president was going to be Donald Trump, right? And he was elected. But it wasn't formalized until the electoral college voted. It was, we do it. And then they went and did the pomp and circumstance. They voted and they made it official. It's the same way Christ came on Sukkot. He tabernacled with us. But it was, he was just with his family. And there's something really special about that because all the teachings of God were really given to the parents to give to their children. And there's a time when families should be alone together. And in fact, one of my family members isn't here because he was upset with me for having church on a Sunday or Christmas. He thought it should have been a family day only. And, uh, and so, you know, that's fine. Because the family was so important to God that he gave Mary and Joseph and the baby that first seven days just as a family. And he does every family. They would have the first seven days of their of a newborn son just as a family. And on the eighth day, they would name the child, circumcise him, and introduce him to the community and who he was. Do you understand how, how prophetic it was that Christ came in tabern on the Feast of Tabernacles, God with us, fulfilling that covenant, and that the circumcision always represented the covenant between God and man, that he was going to redeem his people through Messiah Yeshua, who would be a descendant of the king of David, but a descendant of Abraham. It was a covenant. That's why they had to have all their children circumcised, all their known children circumcised. It was a covenant to all the nations. Even when they would kill them in battle, these men were men that were, were children of the Most High God because circumcision was given to them. And so for Christ who had been circumcised on Simchat Torah, and named and introduced to the world. It was God saying, nothing sad matters because this is the day my son, Yeshua, is introduced to you as a savior of not only his people. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. Except for the fact that Jesus came and he saved us. And that's the meaning of life. That's not only the meaning of the season, but it's the meaning of life. It's the only reason, the great question people say, what is my purpose? Your purpose is to worship the Creator and to bring glory and worship to the Creator. Yes, Kevin? Can I, can I have you read the poem that I wrote that I posted on Facebook? Well, I guess you put it up. I haven't seen it, but I hope it's appropriate for church. Yes, it's appropriate. <laughs> You'll like it. Not All right, let's put it up there. Praise God. <coughs> Tis the season to be jolly, for there is nothing greener than a bunch of holly. The snow is on the ground, and it all, and it is all white. What a wonderful sight. Jesus was born in a lonely manger, but to me, he is no stranger. Everyone knows that Christmas is the season of gifts for the girl and boy, but there should be only one joy. You have heard it before, so I will say it loud and clear. I hope this poem will bring you good cheer. Amen. So you see Jesus is the reason for the season, and there is nothing more to say. But there is one more thing that it may come your way. Plenty of love for your family and friends. Don't be sad, for my Christmas poem has come to an end. <laughs> But Jesus is not only the reason for the season. He is our one reason for living. Yes. And when people get a hold of that, he is the he is, he is the all in all of everything, of all of creation. And they can understand. Uh, they can understand. And so with that.
I'm just a, a very, very joyful to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Amen. Yes. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. Thank you, Sister Mary Watts. Sorry for being late, but I can move this morning. I want to wish uh, everybody a blessed and Merry Christmas. And I want to thank a globe and all and everybody else that came and helped out with the homeless giveaway. And uh, oh, with the uh, Helping others, I, I just—it's just so much. I'm just so full. I talk too much and I cry. But anyway, I just thank the Lord for everybody, and thank the Lord for each and every one of y'all in my church home here, and thank the Lord. I've had people call me yesterday, today, this morning already. Okay, what we're gonna do for the homeless next uh, in, in, in the after New Year's? I said. Mm. <laughs> Mary, I made an announcement today too. I wanted you to hear it. The Lord gave me a project called the Messiah Project. And we're going to link up. We're going to start right away. I'm going to start my work. And we're linking up churches, choirs, and soloists that will go throughout the community and perform in small venues to bring attention to the main event in 2018, which will be at Easter time, at Resurrection Sunday time. And because that's when Messiah was written, and we're going to bring mass choirs together. We're going to have a backer, maybe the Golden One. Maybe we're going to, we're going to use the Memorial Auditorium or the Golden One Center. We're going to have choirs from all across the city. We're going to have multimedia. We're going to have ballet dancers and what have you. And we're going to, and we're going to backer, major backers, to raise money to feed and house the homeless. And we're going to make it a project, a big thing that happens, an annual event once a year. And it's going to be at resurrection time. So not only will we get the word out of the gospel of Christ, but we'll be, we'll be gearing up for the winter time in, in the spring. And getting ready, having the money all in place to take care of all the homeless once a year. So I think Sacramento is going to be known as the city of Sacramento that truly takes care of their needy and their home. So, so the goal is at least a million dollars the first year, and then after that we'll see what that does. Amen. We're going to focus on taking care of the homeless and uh, and make sure our city doesn't have any homeless, any unfed people. Amen. For hungry. I was truly inspired by by the work and the and the, the homeless people that are coming in and getting and there's a lot of needs out there. There's a lot of needs out there. All the time. If you want to see the pictures, Sister Mary, uh, they put we put it up on Facebook of the giveaway that was done just uh, the day before yesterday or was it yesterday? Friday. 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 And uh, and pray for uh, the Soul Boutique and go in there and shop and support them. And they have, they're having, or they do a regular ministry to the homeless, and I want to see our church support that with TLC Soup Kitchen. So, you know? Amen. Amen. Yeah, so. We're going to be, um, the last two Fridays of the month around noontime, we're going to be feeding food and sandwiches and hot dogs. Yeah. So, they get up and they won't go have anything to eat. And uh, we're going to be doing that until um, other things happen. And uh, just one of our mayor's pet projects is Amen. They love the bags, those goodies, they love their socks, they love this. Oh my gosh, my hands are so cold. Can I put my clothes on now? And the uh, socks and everything, everything they need. So the clothing that we collected and everything. So I just thank the Lord for Jesus and uh, being able to do that. And thank the Lord for all the wonderful calls. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So praise God. Um, I believe he's called us to do. Uh, a big work, and if you, you know how they say that you see the the cloud the size of a man's hand, I believe it's the work of people like Mary Watts and and Zanita and the different members that are serving the homeless that will inspire the masses to come out and give and to make our city truly a city of sacrament. You know, because Jesus said, you know, I love what somebody said too. They saved all their money up. They wanted to come see. Mother Teresa, and uh, they said, if we, if we, if I come see you, you know, uh, will you, will you sign my, my autograph book or something? They asked her something, and she said, instead of coming to see me, why don't you take all the money you just spent on your trip and give it to the poor, give it to the needy around. So, 
or send it to me and I'll feed the, the poor community in Calcutta. And uh, it, it's real, it's, people are real hungry and people are really cold. The people yes. get really wet, you know, so, amen. Yes, Don. Do you notice something in the reading when Yeshua was circumcised, he didn't have any When the wise men or magi came and gave them the gifts, they had the money that they needed. Yes, 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 yes. He yes. provided the need. Yes. He provided for the need. He certainly did. Right. No, no. I love how, too, how God used a 500 year old miracle, really, because God gave Daniel the foresight to be able to, to tell them that as a dream. I love how he put that on a plate. He used a 500 year old miracle to supply for the Messiah and oh. for Mary Joseph and Jesus when he came. He, because the Magi said, taught their, their children and the children's children to watch for this God who saved their people. And when he came to come and bring him gifts fit for a king because he was the son of the most high God. And so they came, they passed that down for 500 years, not even the not even the godly culture, but they passed down the teachings of Judaism to the to the pagans, and they came and they brought the need. They brought what was needed. The word the word even says that he will cause even the wicked to get to the bosom of the righteous, and we saw fulfilled there with the Magi bringing to Yeshua. Their culture was a wicked culture, but they honored God and they brought him the things he needed, the gold for their earthly sustenance. After that, Joseph and Jesus, they were both master carpenters. They weren't, you know, when they called him a master, it was because he was a master carpenter. When they were talking to him in a religious context, they would call him Rabbi, Raboni. But when they talked to him as his trade, they would call him master, because he was a master carpenter. He was a master of tradesmen. So uh, there's a lot about Yeshua people don't understand. But uh, as we delve further into the feast, we're going to learn more and more how Yeshua fulfilled every one of them and how we can rejoice at the fulfillment of the Torah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand together. I know that, that, that Paul Shalom and Cassie, they came all the way from our book. I hate that we're coming to the close of our service today, but we get to see them anyway. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's sing. Let's uh, pray. And then let's sing. One more song before we leave. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come together now in your presence and we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We thank you, Lord, that you came and you dwelt among us, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and that you are reigning on the throne of David forever and ever. And of your kingdom, there will be no end. We thank you, Yeshua, that you're at the right hand of the Father in the intercession for each one of us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that Though our sins were a scar, you washed them white as snow, and you're clothing us in the, in the clothing of your pride. You're adorning us even now. Thank you for your rule of Hakodesh, your Holy Spirit, that dwells in and among us and guides us and leads us and, and draws even the unrighteous to the place of repentance, Lord. And once we come into a place of repentance, that your rule of Hakodesh still continues to woo us and to refine us, Lord, and to make us into your image. We thank you now, Lord. We pray, Lord, for the Messiah Project. We pray, Lord, that you would have your way in all things. Lord, that you would do a work, Lord, even through this small church, Lord, that you would use us to reach this community in a greater way, Lord, than we ever imagined that we could do. And, Lord, that we would work with the city officials and the mayor and the different people, Lord, to, to to address this problem, Lord, of homelessness and mental illness, Lord. And Lord, that we would be the light that shines on a hill, Lord. Your word says if you be lifted up, we would draw all men unto you. And so we thank you, Yeshua. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we just thank you that you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the Alpha and the Omega. And we thank you that of your kingdom there shall be no end, and that you shall reign from the sea throne of David forever and ever and ever and ever. And your shalom shall cover the face of the earth. And we give you all the praise in your mighty, precious, matchless name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's sing one more song. Let's sing Joy to the World again. Now let's sing it with the, uh, with the trap we used at the... Uh, 
Christmas as a for play. Do we have that? Okay, it's a little faster than we usually sing it, so keep up with it. Merry Christmas. 